Hi guys, this is Mr. Carl, and we have another Halloween craft for us today. Um, so in your packet, you'll get a picture of a jack-o'-lantern, a little piece of orange paper, a little piece of black paper, and even smaller piece of green paper. And what we're going to work on here today is tear art. So it's just exactly what it sounds like. We're going to take these pieces of paper and we're going to tear them into small pieces. Um, so you're kind of going for the size of a quarter. If you go too small, like this, um, it's going to take forever. <laughs> um, and if you go too big, like this, um, it's going to go too fast and you can't really get too detailed with your work. So about the size of a quarter is probably good um, for this. So we're just going to tear up our piece of paper here. I'm going to start with the orange. Um, so I'm left-handed. So you'll notice the hand that's doing the tearing is probably your, the dominant hand. Or the hand that's pulling down would probably be the dominant hand. Um, yeah, so this is a good uh, activity because it uses both hands together. You have to coordinate them both. Also, it takes some finger strength. We're using pincer grasps on both, um, with both hands. If tearing is hard, you can give your, your paper a little start and then ask your student to tear. So you could do a few starts like this, and then it might be easier for them to pull them off more than tear. Another thing I often tell my students is you need to make sure that you pinch and you pinch very close together and then you can also say pull in different directions which is another hard skill um, but something good to work on. So pinch, pinch and pull in different directions. Okay, and then I'm not providing glue, but what I would suggest is instead of putting glue on the back of each um, piece of tear paper that you've done, I would suggest you put glue all over the area you want to have glued. Um, so right now we're near the orange part, so I'm going to just do where orange would typically be on a pumpkin. And then you can just stick on your pieces a little bit easier. And so the sticking them on part, this kind of works on some visual motor integration piece, some visual perceptual. Um, we're trying to get it inside the pumpkin, not, we're not gluing out there. Um, we're gluing inside the pumpkin. And if you can, I'd have your student um, do the gluing themselves if they can. They have to hold. Okay, so like I was saying, the benefits of having your student glue themselves is that they have to coordinate both hands again. One hand has to hold down the paper and the other hand has to push down with some force to get the glue on there. Um, so we'll do that now with the black. So if you're having trouble tearing, again the little starter tears can help. And you can make these starter tears as big as you need. So that way there's maybe just an easy pull off like that. Get some of these in there. And they don't have to be perfect triangles. It's kind of a nice thing about tear art is it's not, not got to be just so. But a lot of our students like things to be just certain way, so working on our flexibility there. Um, so we're just putting on our black paper. There we go. And then we'll do some green. That's a big chunk. Maybe not that much glue. Okay. And then I'm just probably going to use one. There we go. And if you want, if you're working on cutting, 
You could cut out your pumpkin. Um, if not, if you're working on writing your name, flip it over. I like to have a big box as far as where we're going to put our name, so I'd probably go like this. And if you need to connect dots, you can make dots. And then they can just come by and work on connecting the dots to write their name. Okay. And there is your tear art. Oh, we lost an eyeball. Your tear art jack-o'-lantern for Halloween. All right, let me know how that goes.